Uh, Jamie, do you know what you're serving up for dinner tonight at your house? <laughs> Popcorn. Popcorn, yeah. <laughs> it is okay if you don't know the answer to that question yet. Most people don't at this hour of the right. day. However, if you're looking for a dish with some local flavor, we're here to help. Ali Lucia is live at Birchwood Cafe in Minneapolis with some ideas that you can make right at home. And they look pretty easy, Ali. Yeah, very easy. Just as easy as popcorn, Jamie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, here in Minneapolis, uh, featuring a new book that was just released this week called Twin Cities Chef's Table. And I'm here with the local author behind the book, Stephanie Meyer. And a lot of these recipes are easy, but they're plucked from restaurants all over the Twin Cities, mm -hmm. Stephanie. And why did you pick the recipes you did? Well, I had from, so I was approached by the publisher and they had, um, they had a vision for what they wanted, and they wanted uh, really locally uh, or chef-owned restaurants that featured kind of farm-to-table local food, and then uh, chefs that are starting to achieve national prominence in the Twin Cities, which is kind of our, you know, that's our rave now. We're cool now. And here at Birchwood, we're cooking up a maple butternut squash soup, but even the squash that's being used today is from local growers right, right, in right. the Twin Cities. That's right. Um, one of the farms, Riverbend Farm, that the squash is from is featured in the book. Uh, we went out actually with Marshall and, um, and had a day where we were helping uh, harvest squash and then it was used in the soup. There you see Marshall Paulson cooking up some squash in the kitchen yeah. right now. But uh, even food trucks are featured in this book. You really got something from a little bit of everything in this book. That's right. I, my goal was to take a snapshot of the Twin Cities dining scene. Um, and that included restaurants, of course, but also uh, some of the farms, the food trucks, the co-ops, and some of the other purveyors and markets in town, some of our, our great farmers markets too. We're going to be trying the soup a little bit later. So yeah. for you, why was this butternut squash soup, uh, why was it so, taste, why did it taste so good? Well, it, this is the perfect fall dish, of course, and I thought it would be really fun to share this recipe given that Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And, you know, everybody's squash crazy. This is sort of a squash's moment right now, so I thought this would be fun to share with everyone. Well, Stephanie, thanks for joining us this yeah. morning. We'll have more on the butternut squash soup at 6 40. Uh, no popcorn, though, Jamie. Sorry. I tell you what, a little popcorn sprinkled on Ooh. top of a butternut squash soup is money. Sounds super fancy to me, but <laughs> maybe I can get on board. Very good. I love Stephanie, the cookbook author, is a friend of mine. She's so talented, a great writer, so can't wait to get her book. I'm excited about it. Would she be in line with the popcorn topping on the squash soup? I think she would. Oh, yeah. We actually judged a uh, farmer's market uh -huh. cooking mm -hmm. contest with her. Do you remember? No. She was the one who was like, this flavor was like this, and this was like that. She got oh. all into it, and you, you were like, I like bacon. This <laughs> is good. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit Sounds of a caveman right. when it comes to that stuff. That's fine.